people have to live in, in unity. We are still in transition. Civil society has been decimated. Of course we rely on media. And I think the government has not done enough. The international community has failed to respond. No place in the world is perfect. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button. Hello viewers, welcome to Newspeak South Asia, a program that talks about breeding of terrorism and its impact on South Asian nations. Let's begin with the headlines first. Gunmen kill female health workers in Afghanistan to disrupt polio vaccination drive. Pakbak terrorists kill elected representatives in the Kashmir Valley. And 12 members of banned terror outfit Simi get life imprisonment. In Afghanistan, a recent surge in targeted killings appears intended to drive women away from public life. Unidentified attackers have gone after women journalists, civil society activists and professionals, killing many, forced some to flee the country and leaving the rest to live in fear. Recently, again, extremist groups in Afghanistan targeted female health workers who were working for the government's polio vaccine campaign. We have a report. This is the aftermath of a fatal attack on three female polio vaccination workers in the eastern Afghan city of Jalalabad. Some unknown gunmen shot vaccination workers at two separate locations in the city, killing two volunteers and one supervisor in the polio immunization program. A blast also rocked the provincial health department headquarters, but left no casualties. This recent violence on women medical staff came on the second day of a five-day polio immunization drive. Although no one immediately took responsibility for the killings, Afghanistan on several occasions has witnessed Taliban's hatred towards women health workers in the past. متاسفانه چې څکم لس بجې و شو خو یې کلس نیم بجې وي زمونږ دا خویندې واکسین وخت کوي له ما سره وي نو د کوم بدبخته نجس انسانانو لخوانه په شهادت ورسېدل موږ د دولت څخه د دې خویندو قاتلین په هر رقم یې غواړي او This despicable and cowardly act has taken the lives of three innocent Afghan women who were dedicating themselves to protecting the health of Afghan children. In Afghanistan, most of the vaccination campaigns are conducted by female health workers as they can gain better access to households in door-to-door -door effort. That's why radical armed groups do not allow them in areas under their control to carry out such campaigns. These extremist groups claim that in the past, the campaign had been used to gather intelligence in some provinces. It gives them a meaningless excuse to brutally kill working women in a war-torn country. Last year, the UN mission to Afghanistan warned that health workers were increasingly at risk after a series of attacks. They are targeting anybody which uh, is the f face of the Afghan state, which is the face of the Afghan civil society, because what they want to do is psychologically browbeat the people of Afghanistan into accepting the Taliban as their overlord before it actually comes to power. And that is their strategy. And given the fact that the rest of the world is not recognizing this, I'm afraid they're continuing this particular strategy. Attacks on working women have intensified since the government of Afghanistan began peace negotiations with the Taliban militant group in September 2020. Just a few days ago, three female journalists were killed in Jalalabad in an attack claimed by Islamic State. These women were killed on their way home from work and witnesses said gunmen shot them in the head before fleeing. There are certain civil, acts, uh, civil activists, there are politicians who are talking about, uh, against the Taliban, who are trying to rouse up public opinion against the Taliban and to put in some moral strength in the government to fight the Taliban. 
what the taliban are doing they are now at a, uh, targeting these people what they are trying to do is to break the mental strength of these people destroy their confidence and send a signal to afghan civil society that we can act with impunity where afghan politicians are concerned the rest of the world will not bother and the afghan government is too powerless to actually protect you the pattern of such attacks against women operating in the public sphere is sending a strong message to all women to stay at home the danger of targeted killings is forcing many women to quit their jobs being the only option they have to remain alive moreover the past peace talks have demonstrated the contradictions between each side's stance on women's equality and other central issues kabul should understand that fight against terrorism is also a fight for the rights and dignity of women hence peace in afghanistan must not be made on the backs of afghan women after the abrogation of article 370 in august 2019 incidents of violence have reduced significantly in jammu and kashmir Now, New Delhi is working in the valley to implement its vision for development, enhanced governance, and socio-economic justice for disadvantaged section of the population. But the strengthening of democratic machinery in the region has become a thorn in the eye of Pakistani establishment. Pakbak terror groups are attacking elected representatives in the Union territory. Take a look. The Sopor Municipal Council witnessed a deadly attack on councillors and security guards while the meeting of the council was in progress. In the dastardly act, terrorists burst into the building and opened fire which resulted in the death of two councillors and a guard. Preliminary investigation indicated that a local terrorist Mudassir Pandit of proscribed terror outfit Lashkar-e-Taiba and a foreign terrorist were involved in the attack. अभी तक जैसा इनपुट है दो दो मिलिटेंट ने आके अटैक कर इनकी बेसिकली मीटिंग थी उसमें अटैक हुआ तो उसमें एक कैजुअलिटी मतलब दो कैजुअलिटी हुई तो एक एक को अभी इंजर्ड है तो वो इंजर्ड अभी एसएमएच में शिफ्ट कर दिया गया फ्रस्ट्रेटेड बाय रिपीटेड फेलियर इन कैरिंग आउट लार्ज स्केल टेरर अटैक्स पाक बैक टेरर ग्रुप्स आर नाउ अडॉप्टिंग न्यू टैक्टिक्स टू अनलीश केयोस एंड वायलेंस इन द रीजन While on one hand Pakistan talks big on crackdown on terror and peace in the region on the other the country is leaving no stone unturned to disrupt flourishing grassroots democracy and development in Jammu and Kashmir to demoralize the pro democracy elements in the valley pak back terror groups are targeting those who are willing to represent people through democratic and constitutional ways that's why during the district development council elections in Kashmir terrorists targeted indian security forces civilians as well as election candidates recently terrorists also attacked a senior leader in shrinagar which resulted in the death of a police constable for radical islamist terror groups peaceful participatory election in the valley is the most powerful demonstration of prosperous democracy they do not want kashmir valley to turn to normalcy they do not want democracy to take firm roots in kashmir they do not want the people to meet the elected representatives and discuss with them the day to day needs with the ongoing peace process in kashmir disappointment of pakistan is also increasing islamabad is not able to digest the fact that people in the valley have welcomed a new democratic setup in the region the blood of the kashmiris is not so cheap the kashmiri qaum has sacrificed a lot but they want peace they want democracy they want to live in an environment which is free of fear and terror but there are forces there are elements which do not want that to happen any attack on or harm to the elected representatives of the people is tantamount to attack on the common people Islamabad which now runs out of options to create instability in Kashmir should understand that the kind of war it is planning for the future is fraught with dangers Moving on 
Ever since India began its journey as an elected non-permanent member of the United Nations Security Council for a two-year term in January 2021, the country has been raising its voice against acts of terrorism at the global level, particularly in South Asia. Recently, India urged the United Nations Security Council to remain cognizant of the dangers of weapon of mass destruction falling into the hands of terrorist groups. India is not only concerned about safety and security of people living in its own territory, but it always reiterates adopting and executing improved strategies to counter terrorism globally, especially in South Asia. In a recently held briefing by the UN Security Council's 1540 Committee on the issue of non-proliferation of weapons of mass destruction, India reaffirmed its unwavering commitment to global efforts to prevent the proliferation of weapons of mass destruction. India's permanent member to UN, T.S. Tirumurthy, urged the Council to remain cognizant of the dangers of weapons of mass destruction falling into the hands of terror groups. The access to these weapons of mass destruction by non-state actors adds a serious dimension to threats posed by these weapons to international peace and security. Resolution 1540 identifies terrorists and terrorist groups as key non-state actors who may acquire, develop, traffic in, or use weapons of mass destruction and their means of delivery. As a victim of terrorism for several decades, we are fully cognizant of the cataclysmic dangers that access of WMD to terrorist groups could entail. In this regard, India has been co-sponsoring an annual resolution in the General Assembly since 2002 on measures to prevent terrorists from acquiring weapons of mass destruction that has been adopted by consensus. A number of countries in the world are working on the development and production of weapons of mass destruction. They can kill and eliminate large numbers of people in a short time or cause great damage to human-made and natural structures or the biosphere. There remains a grave danger that several well-established and well-founded Pak back terror organizations like Al-Qaeda, Taliban and ISIS have now gained access to these weapons and materials and methods of their formation. Earlier, Osama bin Laden, founder of Al-Qaeda, openly declared himself in favor of this idea. Speaking at the UN Security Council, India highlighted the cataclysmic dangers that access of weapons of mass destruction to terrorist groups could entail to international peace and security. Preventing non-state actors, including terrorists, from acquiring and using weapons of mass destruction is among the most important responsibilities of the international community. Biosecurity and biosafety measures have assumed particular salience in the context of the pandemic to prevent non-state actors, especially terrorists, from taking advantage of the situation. The focus on non-state actors, however, should in no way diminish state accountability in preventing access of non-state actors to these weapons, criminalizing and controlling such access and dismantling its support infrastructure to such non-state actors. In this regard, my delegation accords great importance and support the 1540 Committee's mandate and its work. For several years, India has been itself battling terrorism with great determination. Terrorism is a global phenomenon whose destructive potential and lethal reach is enhanced by linkages to illicit trafficking in drugs and small arms and international money laundering operations. Domestic measures alone cannot deal with terrorism as long as some countries continue to provide safe havens for terrorists. Therefore, to be effective, the fight against terrorism must be long-term, sustained and global. It must tackle not just the perpetrators of the acts, but also those who support and sponsor them. Intelligence agencies in India have raised alarms on various occasions over the looming threat of radicalization in the country. Agencies have warned that many radical groups have been making attempts to increase their presence in several cities across the country. 
Recently, a district court in India awarded life imprisonment to 12 members of a banned jihadi outfit, which once again reminded us of serious threat radicalization posed to the country. We take a look. Seven years ago, these confined persons were studying engineering. But instead of creating new technological advancements, they chose the path of terror and joined radical organization Students Islamic Movement of India, popularly known as SIMI. They had links with the terrorist organization Indian Mujahideen when they were arrested in March 2014 by anti-terrorist squad and special group of the Rajasthan police. Recently, Jaipur court awarded life term to these 12 SIMI members on terrorism charges. These technocrats have been found guilty of buying SIMs by showing fake documents, raising funds in the name of Jihad, giving shelter to terrorists and conducting recce for bombings. सुप्रीम कोर्ट के डायरेक्शन थे कि 31 मार्च से पहले पहले इसके अंदर फैसला सुनाया जाए लगातार ढाई महीने से हमने इसके अंदर फाइनल आर्गुमेंट्स करे हैं जिसके अंदर हमने 600 पेज की रिटर्न आर्गुमेंट की पेश किए उन सब के बाद आज अदालत ने इसमें फैसला सुना दिया गया है जिसमें 13 एक्यूज में से मशरफ इकबाल को बरी किया गया है शेष सभी एक्यूज को सभी धाराओं में एक्सप्लोसिव एक्ट के अंदर यूएपीए एक्ट के अंदर और आईपीसी की धाराओं में दोषी सिद्ध किया गया है the Students' Islamic Movement of India is a banned organization of young extremist students which has declared jihad against India. It aims to establish Dar al Islam, that is, land of Islam, by either forcefully converting everyone to Islam or by violence. As the organization doesn't believe in a nation state, it doesn't believe in the Indian constitution or the secular order. This terrorist outfit is still believed to be operating underground with networks spreading in many states. Simi has a nationwide presence with bases in Maharashtra, Karnataka, Uttar Pradesh, Delhi, Madhya Pradesh, Gujarat, Kerala, Andhra Pradesh and Assam. Aurangabad, Maligaon, Jalgaon and Thani districts of Maharashtra are considered to be a hotbed for Simi. As far as radicalization and extremism is concerned, organizations and leaders may be neutralized or eliminated, but their ideology remains alive. And that is the biggest and most potent danger arising from groups as the CME, who may have been marginalized, but their ideology can be trigger a fresh wave, create new organizations, and carry out disruptive activities in the country at a later stage. And thus, these have to be monitored. When it comes to brainwashing young Muslim minds, SIMI is not alone. There are many other radical Muslim organizations which are major concerns for security agencies for supplying recruits to Pakistan-based terrorist organizations. They often carry out their activities in close collaboration with Pakistan's covert agencies that have directed violence against India. Over the years, such outfits radicalized Indian Muslim youths and formed networks to train, plot and execute terrorist attack. The government can only provide the overall direction and the resources and the environment for these organizations and groups of individuals to spread the counter-radicalization movement and facilitate it. It is up to the society as a whole to prevent and check radicalization. The unlawful activities of such organizations are not confined to fresh recruitment for carrying out terror activities. They are also engaged in spreading religious discord in society. In many parts of India, these outfits have infiltrated madrasas Muslim clubs, libraries and other cultural bodies for covert mobilization of Islamist forces. They are operating under the cover of religious study centers, rural development and research centers. Security agencies in the country need to increase their efforts to make sure such propaganda does not bear fruits on Indian soil. And with that, we come to the end of this edition of Newsweek South Asia. We'll be back next week with more news, views and analysis from the subcontinent. 
Meanwhile, do keep writing to us at nwsa at nin.com. This is Shreya Savage signing off on the behalf of entire production team of Newspeak South Asia. Goodbye and take care.